a democracy ought to be a system in which uh, the majority of the population uh, has positions and those are implemented by their representatives. But there's no democracy that works like that. In fact, uh, say, take the United States, which is, you know, the, back in the 18th century, late 18th century, the United States was, in fact, became the most democratic society in the world, and it's kind of the model on which others have tried to sort of model themselves. But the American system, constitutional system, was set up so that the majority would not rule. You read the Constitution, it says the Fifth Amendment, it says no person can be deprived of rights without due process of law. But what did person mean? Well, it didn't mean human being. So, for example, the indigenous population had no rights whatsoever. They were simply being driven out and exterminated. Uh, slaves had no rights. Uh, women had no rights. Uh, they were not part of the system. They were basically property, uh, property of their husbands or their uh, fathers. In fact, that extends into this the last century, in fact. Uh, uh, the poor people had very few rights. You had to pass various barriers even to participate. Now, the way the system was set up, it was designed so that uh, power would be in the hands of the wealthy. Quoting James Madison, the main framer, power would be in the hands of the wealthy, the people who respect property rights and will protect the opulent, the rich, against the majority. Now, you read the Constitutional Convention, they discuss the fact that uh, if you had a real democracy, in which the majority of the population could express their will, then the poor, who were the large majority, who would use their voting power to take away the property of the rich, to carry out things like, say, land reform. Remember, these are, it's kind of interesting that if you look back through history, the same questions were raised in the first major work of political science, namely by Aristotle in his politics. Uh, he was concerned mainly with Athens, uh, which was also a society, it was a democracy, but of free men. No women, no slaves, just free men. Much like the United States in 19th, 18th century and until recently. You know, the, uh, and he also considered the same question. He said in a democracy like Athens, uh, what would happen if the majority ruled? He would say, well, they would use their power to take away the property of the rich, and that's not right. So Aristotle and Madison faced the same question, but they drew opposite conclusions. Aristotle's conclusion was reduce inequality. And he proposed what amount to welfare state measures to make everyone essentially middle class. That's his term. And then says, well, then the problem won't arise. Madison's solution was to reduce democracy. So the system was set up so as to fragment and separate uh, the population and to concentrate power in the hands of the wealthy. And then you wouldn't have the problem. And the whole of American history since then, political history, is a struggle over this issue. Uh, in the neoliberal period, it's a regression to an extreme form of concentration of power in the hands of the wealthy. Uh, after it was chipped away, more freedom was gained over the years. Now it's regressed back to uh, high concentration. That's the neoliberal program. Very anti-democratic. I think Koreans know the answer to that better than most of us. I'll say it again. It's not very long ago, 1980s, that Koreans mobilized, organized, and struggled very courageously, very effectively to overthrow a brutal dictatorship that was supported by the United States. And they succeeded in overthrowing it. There was a major democratic revolution. It's kind of like an inspiration to most of the world. They didn't ask anybody what they should do. They just did it. And the opportunities are much greater now than then. I mean, a lot of problems in South Korea, but it's not a dictatorship like it was. So, 
plenty of things to do and you could look at your own history to find them.